Hello everybody, this is going to be a video about CapCut's AI capabilities. Particularly, we're going to be using their script to video feature right here. This is going to be uh, sort of a super honest step-by-step -step guide or tutorial slash review of this and how it works. And I'll give you a few pointers, tips and tricks, things I like about it, things I don't, uh, you know, it's limitations and things like that. So uh, to start with, generally speaking, I do really like CapCut. Um, their AI tools, you know, that they do have are pretty cool and nifty. Uh, they're free to use. We can also use the pro version, which I am on today. Uh, but anyways, let's go ahead and get started with this script to video so we can go ahead and get into the details of how this works. Uh, and again, what's good about it, what's bad about it, because there's definitely some really, it's definitely really cool, I will say, but there's definitely, you know, things, and this is kind of across the board with all AI tools right now. There's a lot of things about it that aren't so good and and we'll get into that and we'll talk about that here shortly but first of all when you open up script to video and i am on a uh, cap cut desktop i'm pretty sure they have this on the web version as well uh, and maybe even the app but anyways i am on the desktop version if you were wondering but anyways you get a few different ai writer sort of prompts here which are pretty cool um i guess if you do have a specific uh, you know, topic in mind, like a cooking tutorial or a commercial or something about games. Uh, but generally speaking, in my experience, these aren't the best way to come up with a, you know, decent script. So I recommend just going to write your own script here, and then you get this entire section. Now what I do, and I'm going to give you a good tip here, um, open up your chat GBT window, just like this. Um, and now a lot of people want to come in here and they want to say, you know, write a YouTube script about, you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever, whatever their topic is. But I found, uh, without a doubt, the best way if you want, you know, a script, which I think this can work great for rough drafts, sometimes depending on the topic and stuff, it can actually give you a pretty good script uh, right off the bat, but it can definitely help give you um, some good ideas a rough draft, essentially. And if you ha are having like a writer's block, this tip can also help you uh, kind of get over that and things like that as well. But basically, instead of having it write a script, you don't want to prompt it like that. For me, what I've been doing is I simply say, tell me about, and then you can pretty much whatever the video topic is, you can you can put that in. So in this example, this is just an example, uh, you can do this on literally any topic you want, and it'll give you usually a pretty good response, although it is pretty short, usually, if you are trying to get an entire video script out of it. Um, but I'll just say, tell me about the history of YouTube. Uh, now from here, there's a few different things you can do with the prompt. Sometimes, you know, with this initial prompt, I might say, tell me a detailed history about it, or, you know, add things like that, that'll give you more of a precise uh, script that you want. Uh, maybe you want a detailed one, maybe you want, to, maybe you want it to tell you um, about the history of YouTube in, uh, you know, any style you want, maybe that's in, you know, documentary style, or a certain tone and things like that. But for this example, let's just go ahead and tell me about the history of YouTube. Now I like using this prompt, uh, the simple tell me about and then enter topic because it gives it to you just as, in my opinion, usually how you would present it as a YouTuber or whatever it may be. Because if you ask it to tell you or create a script for you, it gets like too scripty, if that makes any sense. Like it's like, just way over the top with the script lingo and things like that. Like I, I just don't like the way it usually comes out at all. Uh, but this way, it's just a pretty straightforward, tell me about X, Y, and Z, whatever you want it to be. And now here we have, you know, essentially just a little script. Uh, seems pretty good. YouTube's history begins in 2005 with three former PayPal employees, yada, yada. Over the years, YouTube has continually evolved, adding features such as HD video. Today, YouTube is not just a platform for sharing videos, but a central hub for digital content, education, and innovation, attracting billions of users and generating vast amounts of data every day. Uh, so yeah, this seems you know pretty good. Obviously, it's short, and if you were to actually make a video, you know, using this concept or starting with this, you'd probably want to expand on it, do some more research. Um, it really, you know, expand it a lot because it's probably a pretty short video. It's probably only like two, three, four minute video, maybe, maybe five, uh, probably not even five minutes. It's pretty short. Um, but what we're going to do is go back to CapCut. We're just going to copy this for this example. You know, I'm not going to sit here and edit this and, you know, get really strict about it. Uh, we're just going to throw this into the write your own script so that we can actually talk about CapCut's 
uh, AI features. So we're gonna paste this. You do get a 20,000 word limit, um, or at least I do with the pro version. I'm not sure exactly uh, you know what I get for the pro version that you might not on the free version, but I do know the free version has a lot of, you can do a lot with the free version. So uh, if you don't want the pro version, which is like $11 a month right now, uh, don't worry. You can probably do most all of the things I'm gonna do in this video on the free version as well. So now first downside, first big downside with CapCut that I've noticed, especially when you're doing like the script of video is the voiceovers. Now, these sound pretty good. Like the commentary mail is the last one I used for whatever I was doing. Um, there's, there's a lot to choose from, a whole lot to choose from, and they sound good initially, but I found, at least in my experience, whenever you are actually, you know, when you create it and they're actually reading the script you entered, it sounds a little off. There's like some robotic noise going on. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it goes away when you export it. Probably not though, but at least when previewing it in the video player, uh, I don't really like these AI voices and that's probably the biggest downside or I'll say one of the biggest downsides is doing it this way because it's going to sync up the media and the visuals with this voiceover and there's no way to input your own voiceover. If you could put in your own voiceover, whether that be AI or your own um, to read your script and then it would edit it from that, it would be a lot better. So if I have any feedback for anybody from CapCut watching this video, um, it would be let somebody uh, which you can do this on Animaker, which I've messed around with. I might make a video on that later. Um, but you can actually just upload your own voiceover on Animaker and then edit the video from that. And it works really good. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and play this commentary mail. Hopefully you can hear what it sounds like and we'll see if it fits our video. YouTube's history begins in 2005 when three former PayPal employees, Steve. Okay, so YouTube's YouTube's try to history pause it. begins in 2005. Okay. When There's no pause former button. PayPal employees. Okay, I just needed to click off of it. Anyways, I wish there was a pause button there, but I guess if you click off of it, it shuts it off. Anyways, um, so that one, you know, I don't love that voice, but we're just gonna go with it because I'm not gonna spend time uh, looking through all the voices. But, you know, generally speaking as an AI voice, some of these sound good, but let's go ahead and click generate video. Now, if you do click this little arrow, you're gonna get a couple options of local media um, or smart generation. We're gonna do smart generation. This is gonna pull essentially stock videos and materials um, and put the video together using that. Uh, you can also use local media, I guess, just right off your device and it'll somehow use that. But I like just using smart generation and then you can see what it does. And then you can go back in and, you know, edit it how you want from there. So let's go ahead and click smart generation and we're just going to give it a minute. Usually it doesn't take too long at all to generate this. Um, what you're going to find is the stock footage it uses is sometimes good, sometimes bad very hit or miss, which is the case with a lot of AI tools. But I have found that it's depending on the topic, depending on the topic of the video, it's usually decent. So I can at least give you um, an idea of when you are editing and, you know, swapping out some footage for your own, or maybe you're, you know, you're trying to find your own stock footage that fits it, fits that section of the voiceover or whatever better. Um, you are going to be able to do that a little easier if you do just let it generate its own stuff from scratch. Um, because you know, it might have a, uh, we'll, we'll actually, do, we'll just see it's almost done. We'll just see what it has. And then I'll give you some examples, uh, live of, you know, things I might change or improve on now, keep in mind. So as you can see, it's done a lot of cuts, a lot of stock footage. Um, it looks like, you know, for this t video topic of YouTube, there's probably a lot of good, simple, basic stock footage of people on computers and with cameras, um, and things like that. So it's probably the stock footage. And this is probably pretty good. I'm going to play this and we're going to listen to the voiceover for a few seconds and we'll see how good or bad it is. Um, like I said, in my experience, I've used this the other day. It was kind of robotic and I didn't really like it, but let's go ahead and just see what it sounds like because I'm actually curious. YouTube's history begins in 2005 when three former PayPal employees, Steve Chen, Chad Hurley. You can tell there it already said PayPal instead of PayPal. It said PayPal like the better AI, if you do want to use AI voiceovers, there's definitely much better ones. Like there's some really good AI voiceover uh, programs and softwares out there now. I'll link some below. Um, I'll link a couple different ones for, you know, if you want a more realistic one or whatever. But uh, anyways, let's keep watching a little bit more of this. And Jod Kareem launched the platform. It quickly gained fame as a free video sharing website. Okay, so as you can tell, this is 
this is not bad. I think the voiceover is the worst thing about it. The background music is also usually not great. Um, so I'm just gonna actually remove the background music. So let's go to watch it, like skip, see what some of this looks like towards the end with no background music. Online media impacting culture, politics, and entertainment worldwide. Today, YouTube is not just a platform for sharing videos, but it's- Okay, so you can tell it's decent now. It actually ended up making a two minute, 20 second video out of this. If I was to be making a real video from this uh, and you know, using this as a simply, essentially a template, which is what I think it kind of can be used as at this point. Uh, an example would be, you wanna come to the very beginning. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. YouTube's history. So as you can see, it, it currently used stock footage of just some random people in an office and that's clearly not the original founders. So what you would probably want to do is just come in here, you know, the subtitle looks pretty good. Um, but what you would want to do is, you know, it says YouTube's history begins in whatever, whatever. So you might want something like a YouTube headquarters, old photo. And then when it comes into three formal PayPal employees, then you could add in, you know, put in, you know, delete the stock footage, uh, just like this. And well, I'm not going to do it now, but you delete that stock footage and put in actual, you know, old photos with some effects of these people. And, you know, you go through the, this entire script and do that, and you could actually come up with a good video um, other than the bad voiceover. You'd want to re voice over it somehow um, and then do that. But it can definitely give you a good template by using this AI tool like this. And generally speaking, I would say this video is pretty good for how quickly we just did all of that with only AI. Um, it's pretty good, but, uh, big cons are going to be, well, well, the big pros is that it was fast and easy to do. The big con is that the voiceover sucks. In my opinion, it's pretty bad. Um, and there's no easy way to just change the voiceover. Yeah. You can use some of the other ones, you know, there were a ton of options, but I used like maybe four or five different ones the other day and they all had the same kind of robotic, like not good sound. You know, they pronounce pretty common words wrong pretty often. And things like that so this is definitely a video that you're not just going to throw up and become a youtuber from um, but i don't think that's the best way to go about using these ai tools um, and i think as they develop in the future they're going to become more useful and even better uh you know in the coming years so i really just want to learn and uh you know refine my skills with them and learn the nuances of them like this but uh some cool things you can do from here um, if you do generate a video like this in, in cap cut is you can edit these captions pretty easily, which is really great. Let's go to captions. Uh, you can edit, you know, that, but I recommend it to go into text. Um, actually want to go over to templates. Okay. Go over to templates. Uh, once you go here, a lot of these are used for pro, but there's definitely a lot of free ones too, but you can literally just like click one of these and then you're going to get, uh, let's actually not use that one. That one looks huge. Uh, let's get a red one. Cause it goes with the YouTube theme. Let's just try this one. This one looks a little large, but maybe we can make it smaller. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and look at what this looks YouTube's like. YouTube's history begins in 2000. Okay, yeah. But you can add things like that in CapCut super easily. I love CapCut. I'll probably make more videos on CapCut as I learn about it. But uh, so to kind of summarize on CapCut's script to video AI and things like that, uh, like I started to touch on earlier, the voiceover sucks. The stock media is sometimes good, sometimes bad. A lot of times you're going to need to swap these things out, um, but it can definitely give you a good rough draft and speed up the creative process. Um, there's a lot of really cool tools, effects, and amazing parts about CapCut, but as far as the AI goes, again, the voiceover sucks. Uh, the visuals are hit or miss, and there's no good way to like, you know, just simply swap out uh, this voiceover, because if you just swap one out, then the visuals won't line up. And I don't think there's really any way to like resync them. I mean, I guess you could just go through and drag them around, um, which is really what you have to do. But uh, anyways, I think it's really cool to use. And if you want more tutorials on CapCut on anything specific, I'll definitely be making some more soon as I learn CapCut and how to use it, because there's a lot of really cool, awesome effects and things like that. But uh, this has been my kind of raw, honest review slash tutorial on CapCut script to video AI. Uh, tool. If you enjoyed this video or want more content like this, please leave me a comment below. I appreciate the support and I'll see you guys next time.